Hey, this is Joe from SoFly, and in this video, we are going to export WooCommerce orders using WP All Export. So to get started, we'll go down here to All Export and select New Export. And then from the dropdown, we'll select WooCommerce Orders. And you can see here, we've detected 5,754 orders. And if we wanted to, we could just export a subset of these. So for example, let's say that we want to just export everything where the shipping state is from California, right? So we have 621 orders from California. We can drill down and we can kind of create filters for anything like from the date, from you know, stuff about the products people ordered, things about the customer, like their shipping address, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in this case, we're just gonna export all of our orders. So we'll delete our filter and then select customize export file. If we wanted to migrate these orders to a different WordPress install, we could select migrate orders. Um, in this case, we're just gonna export them to CSV. Um, if you're interested in migrating your orders, check the description below. We have a video on migration. All right, so here's where we set up our export file. So we start off, we just have order ID, order key, and the title. We can preview that, and this is what it looks like. We have order ID, key, and title. We can drag and drop to rearrange these. So you can see now the title is in the second column, or we can drag these out of the box and we can remove it. Click here to add a field, and then we can search for all of our different fields here. So let's say we wanna add the customer name. So we'll add their first name, save that. And then there's another way to do it over here. We have all of our data here on the right. So now we can drag and drop in our billing last name. We'll preview that, see how it looks. Looks pretty good. Now we have our first name and our last name. Now let's say I wanted to have both of these fields in one, right? I just want their billing name. I don't want billing last name and first name. I just want their first and last name combined. So the way we do that, is we get down here to add field. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to custom export field. And then we'll drag in the billing first name, space, billing last name. And then we'll just call this customer name. And we'll save it. Preview, and there we go. Now we have the combined information and we can get rid of the billing first name and the billing last name. Um, I also don't really want the order key in there. So now let's check out the rest of the um, data we have available to us in here. So we have our completed date. That seems pretty relevant. So we'll put the order date in there and the order total. And we'll put the customer name over here, right? Okay, next up we have customer information. So we already added our name and we have our customer um, shipping information. So let's create another um, custom export field for their address. So billing address one, billing city, and then we'll add a comma in here to just make a nice, easily formatted um, address for them, state, and then we'll add our postcode. And we'll call this billing address. Preview. And there we go. We have these nice, easy to read addresses. We can get rid of billing country. Don't need that. Okay. Moving along, now we have order items. So this is the stuff that they actually included in their order. So what I'd like to see here is we'll just keep it nice and simple Add the product name, product variation details, if there are any, and then we already have the order total, so we don't need that. So let's see how that looks. And there we go. So this is the stuff that they ordered. The SKU would probably be pretty helpful on this uh, as well. So we'll drag the SKU in there to take another look. Okay, great. So now we have some pretty um, easy to read information. Now you'll notice here that we're getting a lot of doubles, right? So we have this order ID is actually on two rows and that's because this person ordered two products. So we can get on here to advanced options and that's that this, this option here, display each product in its own row is making it so that each product has its own row, obviously, right? So if they order two products, that order would have two different rows. So let's see how it looks without that. So our first order here, now each order is just on its own row, and then we have product one, product two. 
they ordered three products, there would be multiple columns, right? Um, so that's how that works. So I'm going to keep it like this. I just want one row per order. Okay, now let's continue down. Um, we have more product data information here. Um, we can drag in the price, et cetera. Um, we have the product taxonomies, like the categories and tags for the product, all the custom fields, the attributes like size and color, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's it for my product data. Let me close some of these up to kind of clean up this list for you. So this is all going to be all of your tax and shipping information for your order. And any fees and discounts that were associated with them, like if they used coupons and things like that. Order notes, refunds, um, any refund data. So if any of these orders were refunded, you know, if I wanted to make, for example, um, a report that just had all my refunded orders, you know, this would be pretty relevant here, right? So we could set up a filter. So it's only if the only, only export orders that were refunded, and then we can have all the refund information in there. Um, any custom fields associated with the order. Um, and then here's just kind of a grab bag of all the extra stuff that's kind of not so important, but we included it just because we include all of the data associated with your order that you can export. And then ACF, if you have any ACF data on your orders, it shows up down here. Okay, so now I've set up my um, export, and this is what it's going to look like. And if I wanted to change the CSV separator or change the header, header rows or something like that, I have these options down here. And then down here, we can determine what kind of export we want to create. So in this case, the default is a CSV. A CSV is just a very simple um, spreadsheet file. Um, it's a text file, and then um, instead of having like, you know, explicit columns and stuff like that in the Excel file, each column is just separated by a comma. So it's a comma separated um, values. And you can change the separator up here if you like. So any spreadsheet um, software like Google Sheets, Numbers, Excel is going to use be able to read a CSV, including just a normal text editor. Um, we can also export to Excel, either the old XLS format or the newer Excel Access format. Um, I say newer, it's probably been around for about 15 years, but um, and then if you wanted to, you could export to XML. And you can drag and drop to set up how your XML feed would look like. Um, or if you want to get a little bit more intense, you can um, create your own custom XML specification here. In this case, however, we're just going to go for a simple CSV. If you're curious about the other export types, we go into detail in those and other videos. Check out our feed. We have a ton of videos on this. Um, and then finally down here, we have the function editor. So if I wanted to, I can pass any of this data through a custom PHP function. Okay, so what we'll do is we will select export the value returned by a PHP function. We're going to make a function. We're going to call it replace state. So down here in the function editor, I'm going to write a function called replace state and we're going to pass it some data and then we're going to return str replace i'm going to take in california and i'm going to return california okay and we'll save that Right, so what that's going to do is it's going to take the building state and it's going to pass it through this function. And this function is just going to take any string that has CA in it and it's going to replace it with California. So we'll save, preview, lo and behold, this is now California. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. You can pass any data through these functions and you can kind of get away with some pretty crazy stuff. You know, if you want to pass the order ID, into a function, then you can, you know, query the ID and pull out all sorts of information, form relationships, um, and kind of do some pretty crazy stuff. So you can do a lot with this. Um, okay, that is our export. So let's go ahead and continue. And then here we have some options. So first up, we have our scheduling options. Um, basically, we can set this order, this order export up to run anytime we want it to run automatically. So we have a scheduling service that costs $9 a month, and you can determine if you want this to run every week on a certain day of the week or every month, you know, on the first like Monday or whatever. Um, and then you just tell it when you want it to run, the time zone, 
and that's it. And then automatically your export's gonna run on that schedule. Um, you can also set this up with manual scheduling and this just uses cron jobs. So um, we have some videos down below that cover scheduling in a bit more detail. Um, so check those out if you're more interested in this. Um, in this case, we're just gonna, not gonna schedule anything. We're just gonna run this export. Now, we have some options here that are pretty relevant for exporting orders. Um, this right here is called real-time exports. Um, so you can export each order in real time as they are completed. So somebody creates a new order on your site, it gets saved, boom, this export runs, and it's only gonna export that, that one order. And then you can do whatever you want with it. You can set it up to, you can send that data to Zapier, and then you can send it to like, they, you know, over a thousand apps, you can email it, you can HTT post it somewhere, you can add it to a you know, Google Sheet spreadsheet, kind of do whatever you want with it. Um, pretty powerful stuff. Um, if you wanted to run this a little bit more manually, you can only export orders once. Then that way, every time this order um, export runs, it's only going to export the new orders that have been created that haven't already been exported. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, here, you know, the, last, the rest of these are kind of self-explanatory. Only export orders that have been modified since the last export. Um, and the rest of these are, um, you know, these ones down here probably aren't so relevant for exporting orders, but maybe they're interesting to you. Um, this one's pretty cool. Allow non-admins to run an export in client mode. Um, so, you know, as you've seen with WPL export, you can, when you're creating this export, you can execute PHP. So if you're a non-admin, um, let's say you have somebody who doesn't have admin to admin access to your website. You don't want them to have admin access. Um, if you gave them access to WPL export to create a new order, well, they can just write code to make themselves an admin, right? So you don't want to let them use WPL export unless they're an admin. Um, however, with client mode, you can let untrusted non-admins run existing exports. So the way this works is um, you go over here to your settings, scroll down, and then these are the roles of access. So you create a user role, you tell them they have access to client mode for WPL export. And then when they log in, they'll see the little WPL export thing over here. And if this is for every export that this is checked on, that user will be able to see that export in the manage exports page, and they'll just be able to run the export. They can't edit it, but they can run it. Um, and so then that way you can let them, you know, run these exports and things like that, and then get the data that are pre-configured without exposing, um, without letting them run PHP, right? Um, pretty cool stuff. Okay. So that's about it for this page. Now we're going to confirm and run the export. Now we're exporting like 5,700 and whatever orders. So this is going to take a minute or two. So I'm just going to let this run and I'll come back when it's finished. Okay. So the export is complete and we can click here to download our CSV and we'll open that. All right. And here is our export. So we'll go ahead and close that. Now, the other option here is we can download a bundle. So what the bundle is going to do is that is basically a zip file and it has your CSV export. And then it also has a settings file for WPL import. So you can then upload that zip file, the WPL import, and it'll run your export and kind of pre-fill all of the import settings. And then over here we have export edit import. So the idea with this is let's say I wanted to edit all of my orders in Excel. So we'd run the export, download the CSV, edit the stuff we wanted to edit, and then click import with WPL import, put the new CSV in, and then it would just update all of our existing orders with the new data that we edited. Um, and then down here we have our secure URL. So let's say I'm running this, um, this order export on a schedule. Um, what I can do is I can generate this URL. And then I can give this to somebody. And then every time they go to that URL, it's gonna download the export file from this export, even if like the file name changes, whatever. So every time that I run the export, this URL is gonna download the, the new version of that file. Um, pretty useful. I have my scheduling options over here again, in case I wanted to edit with those. And then this is pretty cool. So this is our external apps integration. So um, every time this export runs, we can send the data automatically to Zapier. And then in Zapier, you can email the data to somebody, add it to Google Sheets, um, add it to Dropbox, tons of different stuff you can do with that. Um, there's some limitations. Um, you don't have 
access to the actual order data. If you're doing a big order, like a big order export like this, you just have access to the file and the metadata, like how many orders you exported. Um, now, if you're doing a real time export where you're exporting the data one by one, then that data is accessible to Zapier. So um, a little bit more useful there. Um, but that's pretty much it. So that's all it takes to export your WooCommerce orders with WPL export. Thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe. And we have plenty more of this content on our channel. See you next time.